Hello again, Steve here, and tonight I wanted to talk a little bit about something called the hero's journey. I uh, The reason this came across my plate and across my mind is because I was doing a little bit of studying on marketing, on how to, how to be able to promote myself a little bit better along the lines of a workshop I wanted to do, and that that concept came up, which is basically an archetypal story that that pretty much all cultures use in order to tell epic stories. Apparently, and I'll put a link in the description here, because several years ago I did a, I had a friend of mine and I, we had a speakers forum here in this, in this small city, and we invited various different speakers to come in. And this one guy, Kelly Goyer, he's a life coach guy, and he, he gave a presentation on the hero's journey, and I, you can watch some of that. It's the, the, the film quality is very poor because it was about six years ago and I didn't have a proper proper lighting and stuff like that. But um, he was talking about how the this concept was sort of first observed, you know, at least in the modern age, sort of all over the world by this guy named Joseph Campbell. He had traveled the world and he noticed that there was a sort of a subplot to all epic stories and he called it the hero's journey. And Kelly uses this in his life coaching, he uses it to help people to get on to their own hero journey storyline kind of thing for life. It's sort of a sort of a meaningful path to life and a, a sort of a natural path that a lot of people take. And that's why it's so it resonates so well in terms of stories because it's so natural to us, I guess. And what he re, what he defined what a hero was, which is that uh, a hero is anybody who's still willing. In other words, we can all identify with the hero because there's an aspect of that or the wish for that within ourselves, I guess, which is the guy who's been beaten down and beaten down and he will not give up. It's somebody who still has some sort of zest for life to get something done, right? And he talks about how the hero is the one who doesn't necessarily take the safe path. Because the the hero is going for something, he's got a goal or whatever, right? And he travels out of the known and into the unknown. Uh, the explorer, think of the explorers, the innovators, and all these sorts of things. The warriors, the people who fight for freedom and whatever. They they step out of their comfort zone and into that unknown, but because they've got some sort of drive, right? And think of the epic stories where the 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 hero slays the dragon, right? I mean, it's like it's that's even an expression, slaying our dragons. It's about, you know, um, coming up against adversity and being able to knock it down. And in the process, that looks like the goal, just slaying the dragon, but the deeper goal is inside. And this is used in all sorts of, apparently, uh, this marketing thing that I was reading, he was talking about this famous Hollywood professional, I forget what the name of that person is, but it's a person anyways who looks at all the scripts and it has to follow this sort of sequence. If it doesn't, it's sort of a, it's sort of on a subconscious level, it's not poetic enough for us. It's, it's, it's kind of weird. So I just wanted to uh, recount, you can listen to Kelly's, but I think it's valuable just in terms of a reminder, I guess, and how this actually works out. So The stages of the hero's journey, he talks about how there's like a call within. It's like this something flickering within, within, right? And I remember that with myself, for example, when I started into public speaking, it was, it was because I had been asked to do a presentation somewhere and, and the experience was so unbelievably brutal on me. It was a complete disaster in, you know, optically and experientially. It was like hell, basically, because I had complete stage fright and shutdown. But because of that, through what happened, there was like this call within, right, to, to do something about it. And he talks about that, the call, right? And, and, and also it begins sort of in a, a state of pain, in a way, a level of pain at least. Because it's, that call is from a place of there's got to be more to this life. There's got to be more. Like there's that, you know, like he talks about the, the willingness. The somebody who's still willing. Like it wasn't completely, it's a person who's not, not down and out yet. 
end. That's the first step. The second step is the the refusal. The refusal to to want to though. It's like that first blip, right? It's like, oh, I'm in pain. I look up, I want that. But then there's that reversal that happens either immediately or shortly thereafter. It's like, oh no, it's you know, I'm just I guess I'm not cut out for this kind of thing. And there's that spiral down into that that pit almost de- almost deeper than the pit that was there uh, as a result of where that first spark came from in a way, right? And but then from there, there's that rec- there's that quick memory of where it started, and then there's something comes along. There's there's the you know you find your road in a way, right? And you find your hoda road or whatever. Like you start on that journey, and it starts to feel kind of good. You're making some pathway or whatever, and then all of a sudden, um, the, uh, the the stuff, the opportunities and whatnot start to show up. It's like you know. In my case, you know, all of a sudden I found a public speaking club and some people to help me and blah, blah, blah. And, I'm, you know, all excited for the first few days, memorizing this and tricks and tips and gestures and all that. And all that's all great. And then, but then again, it's like, there's that euphoria of, it's like the kid, right? The kid's, what is it? The Dunning-Kruger effect. Oh yeah, this is easy. I've seen somebody do that. I remember. <laughs> I remember a little story here of when uh, my daughter had been playing. Ooh, I forget the name of the game. There was a computer game where you could build a whole town, and you can. I think it was Roller Coaster, Roller Coaster Tycoon, or one of those, where you could build all this stuff with a click and move these things around on the computer and stuff. And she she just loved building. And I was, I was building a house at the time, and she was just. She was young. She wanted to go and build with me. She liked building so much, you know. And then we get out there and it's like, <laughs> I told her, you know, carry this two by four here and there. And it was raining and everything. All of a sudden she says, this is hard. This is too hard, you know. And and a lot of times it's like that for us. We get all excited and we start pushing forward. And all, all of a sudden we realize, wow, this is work. And there's I don't like these people. And there's this stuff we're doing that I don't like and whatnot. And I found, I found that within the public speaking club. They were doing all kinds of stuff that I, I was wondering what the heck we're doing it for. And what Kelly was talking about, this, this step number five, is, is that when the real challenge really comes on, the real strong challenge comes on. And in scriptural terms, you know, in these old epic stories, like with Jesus and all that and so on, uh, these old stories, is the dark night of the soul. And the, 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 the pit or the, just the depths, it's like the, the slog, you know, or the, the, the epic story of the guy is all of a sudden, you know, the adventurer, all of a sudden he thought he makes it there and then he hits this mountain, you know, and that's when the real work starts. Um, but it's where the real change takes place. It's where the real victory takes place. It's like the stories where you see the, where the, you know, the great knight, he rides out trying to find the princess. He's riding across the plains and everything's looking fine. The birds are flying around and stuff. He finds the castle and he's making his way and he's almost there. And then there's the dragon, right? It's like, that's when the journey really starts. And life is so often like that. And because, but once, once the, the story, you know, the struggle really begins, but once coming out of there, it's out of the darkness into the light. It's, it's metaphorical, right? It's like out of that dark night of the soul into the light and that's where the real gifts take place right and it becomes like salvation right it's and that's uh sort of the story of jesus in a way too i mean he actually actually used the metaphor of the cave right and that the cave is the metaphor of the cave shows up over and over again in the dark night and so on in this and then there's this resurrection to to the light right the light of the world you come out of the cave um from the darkness of the night into that light and at that point, it's like what the Christians call a born again experience. We, you know, it's, it's the finding of self, finding of that true genius, that natural, as I call it the inner genie. <laughs> but anyways, uh, that guy up there. And it's, you know, you might say the, 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 the real you or the truer sense of you, or the Christians would say connecting with the Christ or the Holy Spirit, having received the Holy Spirit or whatever. It's like that other level of life where a lot of the where there's it's it's sort of like one of those it's one of those times when there's before then and after then i mean there's no 
it's a different version of self. It's a more mature version of self or whatever, right? And, um, and of course, once that happens, usually there's a service. It's a dedication almost towards a service of a bigger cause than just the individual self. I mean, that's also important because we got to survive and eat and stuff like that. But there's, there's like a bigger goal and it's easier to make decisions as to what is important and what is not, right? And uh, we no longer worry so much about what we should do in the eyes of others because we have a bigger plan. We've been through so much. It's like, you know, it doesn't... Uh, what other people say doesn't matter as much. It's like we've been through that darkness into that light and we can see clearly now and we're off and going. So yeah, a rather metaphorical and just um, rambling uh, talk tonight. But I think it's an important one and I just wanted to, I just thought about it for some reason when I was going through all this, this little bit of marketing study and how, how it relates to storytelling and, and marketing and so on is, and, uh, how it's such an archetype of our very ancient way of communicating this, this hero's journey. And I think it's because there's, there's a hero in all, in every one of us, every one of us who's still willing, who hasn't given up on life. There's that element of the hero within us. And that's what we cheer for in a way we cheer for the underdog. We cheer for those who are in the struggle. Yeah. What do you think? If you like what I'm doing, please like, subscribe, and share, and comment in the box below. Ring the bell, apparently, too. You get notification if you're a subscriber, and we'll talk again soon. Bye for now.